Why is there so much discussion about end times and Ukraine or any current event? Stick around and let's break this down. Welcome to Keeping It Real with Grandma Jo in faith and in truth. Let's jump right in. Many already know, but for those who don't, the study of end times is called eschatology, and it often refers to a few of these terms. Pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, all having to do with the tribulation and whether believers will be raptured from any of it, participate halfway through it, or be involved in it through the full tribulation. Also terms are used pre-mill, amill, or amill, some say, and post-mill. These all have to do with the thousand-year reign in Revelation 20, whether it's literal or whether it's just symbolic. Then we have Gog and Magog, which is related to the prophesied invasion of Israel, who that might be and what land he comes from. What, if anything, does this have to do with Ukraine? Many scholars believe that Magog, in Ezekiel 28, is referring to Russia, and Ukraine was once part of Russia. So they are watching every single move to see how this might align with their belief of end times. These interpretations have been, are, and will continue to be debated. So what's the point? What should you, I, or we do through all of this? First, we don't live in fear. Let's look at John 16, 33, when Christ was preparing the disciples when he was going to leave them. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The next thing we need to do is have confidence that God is in control. Proverbs 19, 21. God is ultimately in control. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. That includes if that purpose is in a person, a community, a state, a country, a nation, or the world. Next, we are to be ready, and this is a great word that Christ speaks about his return. Matthew 25, 1 through 13. This one's a little longer, but hang in there. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom! Come out to meet him! Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, Go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. And although we are to be ready, we are to live daily, faithfully. Let's check out 1 Thessalonians 5:12 through 18 Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in your highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And to cap this off with the power source, we're to trust God. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. To summarize, whatever times we are in, we do not have to fear, and we can have confidence that God is in control. We can be ready, we can study, and we can vet everything through the Word of God and solid doctrinal teachers and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth. 
as much as it depends on you, live in peace. Do not be lazy or a busybody. Be patient and help those in need in whatever way you can. Encourage one another. Do not seek or incite revenge, but rather pray continuously. And then he says we wrap this up by rejoicing always and giving thanks for everything. Everything. With this list, we will be kept very busy, even if we never knew one thing about end times. As we continue to pray for all of these events, we can trust God for his will now and in all times. Blessings. We'll see you next week.